Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and in today's video, allow me to introduce to you a brand new dichotomy, or perhaps it will be, or perhaps it will not be, unrelated to the four letter MBTI code. You figured out maybe that you are an intuitive and you are a feeling type, but there is another dichotomy out there, and it has to do with what you find essentially inherently meaningful. Something that I've noticed that I've been staring at, right in, it's been right in front of me all this time, and I haven't seen it, but I've noticed it, and I've been confused by it, and annoyed by it many times, and I'm sure you have too. How can there be people of my type that are religious? Now, religiousness, an interesting thing about religiousness is, I believe, well, anyone can be raised to be religious, and uh, we can all be religious, of course that can be a culturally developed thing. But, some people appear to gain a sense of meaning out of believing in spiritual teachings, where I have never felt meaning from spirituality. And this has fascinated me. I've heard other people tell me that they need to have something to believe in, to gain value out of life. They need to believe in an afterlife. They need to believe there is a higher sense of justice out there. And I've listened to this, and I've stared at it, and I've been like, wow, you do? That's interesting. And uh, I felt, of course, that that was genuine. And I, that's also why, I, why I've why i never been a radical atheist. I've never judged people for being religious. I've never felt that, that was, there was anything wrong with that. Who am I to judge? But... I have still felt fascinated by the fact that some people believe in God. Now, I believe that how likely you are to gain meaning from having something to believe in is a personality trait in itself. And I believe that I am a kind of person that doesn't gain any sense of value from having something to believe in. I don't need to have something to believe in. I don't need a teaching to live my life by. I don't need to be devout. I don't need detachment. I don't need non-attachment. I don't see any sense of value in being detached from anything. I don't speak off or relate when Buddhists talk about the need to free yourself from material possessions. Of course, I'm not a materialist at all. But I enjoy the good things life has to offer. I enjoy good foods. I enjoy the earlier this morning when I heard the rain fall. And I felt almost ecstatic. And I love sensations. And I love pleasure. And I've heard so many INFJs talk about this as some kind of SE trip. And I felt like, what? Because to me it's never felt like... Sensory gratification was me going into my inferior function because to me it always felt like this was my life This was how I felt. This was what I valued I've always valued good foods I've always been the person that wanted to go to that restaurant and I've always wanted to be that person that wanted to uh, Try out that new place and to see that new thing and to smell that and to experience that and to hold that and I understand the connection, I understand why people make the assumption that being a sensing type has something to do with being a hedonist. But studying ISTJs and ISFJs, we quickly find that this is not necessarily true. I know ISTJs that are deeply Christian and that find a value in a sense of value out of routine. And I've studied what sensors value, and what I find that sensors really value is not religion in itself, but respect for your elders. Obedience, in a sense of discipline, in a sense of following and trusting the system. Security, stability, being clean, being healthy, maintaining your body, being physically fit, being healthy, being, <laughs> being with your family. Taking care of your family, doing things together with your family. Typically, this is what the sensor values, and religion is not necessarily a part of that equation. I've met ISTJs and ISFJs that love to go to fam their favorite pizza places, to dine in. They've 
love, they love experiences, they love coffee, they love the good in life. And I met ISTJs that simply see it as something you need. Well, of course I need to eat, but I don't see the value of it in itself. It's just food. What's, what's the point of it? And um, that's simply it. This new dichotomy that I want to talk about, and it might not become an actual dichotomy, maybe it's not big enough to be, but it's a difference, is how you gain meaning in life. And I believe hedonists, such as myself, find meaning in pleasure and in avoiding pain. And that religious people find meaning in having something to believe in. In avoiding doubt. In avoiding uncertainty. And I've always felt like a person that can handle uncertainty. I can live in, I can thrive in uncertainty. I don't need to have a strong belief system. I am and have been comfortable changing my beliefs and exploring new beliefs and exploring new viewpoints all throughout my life. And I've never committed to one. You can say that's an admirable thing. You can say I'm a critical thinker. You can say that, wow, you're so cool, Eric Thor. But I don't think that's it. I don't think it's because I'm a high critical thinker that I am like this. I don't think this necessarily makes my view more accurate than anyone else's. Just the fact that I've changed my mindset, that doesn't mean that I'm going to be more likely to be right than other people. I believe, really, from an objective perspective, it's just as likely that I'm right that a religious person might be right about what they say. And I understand that, and I uh, can acknowledge that. I'm a, I've never said, I, I've said my, I'm an atheist, but I alter that later on to I'm an agnostic. And I'm very humble with my viewpoints. I Sometimes I get a little arrogant and I say, this is the revolutionary thing. Uh, but I'm really humble about it. And uh, really, I understand that I'm detached enough to say, no, maybe not, actually. <laughs> and uh, I, I am sometimes speak in larger words than I mean it. But in the end of the day, what I love is to explore new viewpoints. I have an interest in religion and spirituality from a philosophical standpoint. I've studied Buddhism, I've studied all kinds of different teachings, and I've been fascinated with it, and I've discussed in length with religious people. And sometimes my parents have mocked me and they've told me, Eric Thor, you're going to become a cult leader. But I really feel like I lack the devotion that a cult leader needs. I lack the belief a cult leader needs. I don't get any, I wouldn't get any sense of value from being in that position. And um, here's the thing I work together with INTJs, and I found myself surprised when they told me that they were religious. I was like, what? You go to church? Really? And I met INTPs that are so devout in their. Atheism, so passionate about their atheism, so fierce in what they believe. Really, that like these INTPs, they can only consider one viewpoint. They have one belief, and they are so firm about it, so passionate about it. And they're using their logical thinking to advance it and to find different things to strengthen that viewpoint. And they're impossible to argue with, because they are so devout. And I'm not. And um, in all of this... I'm learning one thing. Being a feeler doesn't make you more likely to be religious. Being a thinker doesn't make you more likely to be a critical thinker. Being sensing, valuing sensing, does not make you more hedonistic. And it's time we all stop saying that whenever we go out to enjoy the riches of life, that's about sensing, because it's not about standing on stage, it's not about being concrete, it's not about literal expression, it's not about comfort in your body, it's about pleasure, it's about joy, it's about gratification of desire. Pleasure is, hedonism is about the experience of pleasure. You can get pleasure from sensing and from intuition. 
And let's talk about pleasure from intuition for one second. What is pleasure from intuition? Pleasure is what I experience when I learn something new. Pleasure is what I experience when I find out something amazing about something that I didn't know before. It's the sense of ecstasy I experience when I get a new idea. It's the sense of fulfillment I can find in relationships and being together with other people just by being around them. I can experience sheer pleasure, sheer ecstasy, sheer joy. Sexuality, and that's a very intimate connection with hedonism, really. It's all about often pleasure. Uh, of course, it has to do with so many different things besides that, like connecting with someone, being close to someone, and all those things, having family, having kids. But sexuality and pleasure tend to go hand in hand. And this is my strongest argument, really, that sexuality has something to do with sensing. Sexuality, if sexuality were about sensing, then intuitives would not probably reproduce. And uh, I know this is just a tendential argument. There might be another biological way, like uh, maybe intuitives are more predisposed to wanting to have kids for family purposes or something, but that doesn't make sense, right? The stronger argument I have is that hedonism, devotion, all those things have been proven by Schwartz and by social psychologists to be sheer polar opposites. The more you value religion, the less you value pleasure. It makes sense. A lot of religions are this to some extent anti-sexuality or at least they promote some uh, traditional form of sexuality or some idea of what sexuality should be to be divine in a sense uh, hedonism uh, from a religious perspective can sometimes be viewed in negative regard just like religiousness and devotion can be to a hedonist viewed in negative light it's not actually negative really it's not it's has to do with that the uh, hedonist worries that religious expression will come at the expense of sensory gratification. Going to church will come at the expense of having a nice beer at the pub. Um, just as the religious person will feel that uh, hedonism and sexuality may come at the expense of being close to God. To some, uh, that's why they people tend to dislike these two. And they tend to be described as polar opposites, just as helping other people as a value, as opposed to achieving something for personal means, accomplishing something nobody else has. So at the end of the day, at the end of this video, the one thing I want to leave with you is, what does an INFJ that is devout, what does your personality type look like if it is devout compared to if it is a hedonist? And um, what do you think hedonism and religiousness really is or where does it come from why are we religious why are we hedonistic what is it that makes us these things what makes us value this to begin with that's the most important question that's the most interesting question i have today thank you all for watching this video and i hope to see you guys in the next one